Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy, Synergy this, that, and the other thing. And I've got Todd on the line. His last name is Hartley, and he's with WireBuzz. You there, Todd? I am. Thanks, Brad. It's, it's good to be here. <laughs> it sure is, man. We're, we're virtually in the air. I'm up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the nerve center and world headquarters of the Mississippi River. That's where it starts here. That's know. right. 10,000 lakes. And you're down in Arizona where there's like four lakes. <laughs> right. And I go every year up to uh, Minneapolis for yeah. a speaking event and uh, run, run over into St. Paul on my uh, afternoon run and just always enjoy it. It's such a, a beautiful part of the country. It really is. I mean, all the lakes and there's literally the Lake of the Isles. There's Calhoun, which is now Bidimaka Ska. You guys have lakes up there? 10,000 of them. They're all over the place. Very humid. A lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a lot of people don't realize how much corporate business is here. I started doing magic when I was a little kid and it got me into the event industry and then the events kind of shifted and I'm doing this online daily. But, uh, you know, General Mills, Pillsbury, 3M, Honeywell. Target. Target, Best Buy. Yep. Um, Medtronic. Yep. That's a client of mine. There's a lot of them. Oh, good. <laughs> They're all here. So let's uh, learn a little more about you. you. How long have you been in Arizona? I've been out here for 30 years. Oh, I own wow. an agency. I'm a digital marketer. I help businesses use the power of video to convince and convert faster. And in today's world where selling is, face-to-face -face selling is, um, is prohibited, I teach the tactics for businesses to use the power of video to accelerate their sales process along with digital marketing and smart web design. And that's a lot of fun for me. You know, I just um, did a quick video this morning on that topic of the, using the video to create that relationship because I got prospected by some guy that was selling Bitcoin stuff yesterday. He just connected yep. on Facebook and he went right into the pitch. Yep. No relationship building or anything. I didn't know this guy from anybody. And I think it's really important that you use video. And I think uh, video, I used to, I, got this uh, term I call it edutrainment where it's educational right. and it's fun and it's 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 a uh, training too. <laughs> well you know there's something interesting what you just discussed what you explained about people starting off talking about their product and getting right into the pitch is something that humans have experienced for a very long time in social settings it's when Girl at bar is approached by dude who in first question, the dude's like, hey, you want to get out of here and see my fish tank? Now, <laughs> marketers make this mistake all day long when at the very beginning of their page, they're already pitching their product. And what you experience is this, yep. a disconnect. The prospect is at a different place, what's going on in their head, than the marketer and there's misalignment and in doing so, the ad dollars that brought that traffic to that page end up becoming more and more expensive because the marketer's level of sophistication or savvy is so out of alignment with their customers that it costs them so much more in order to convince and convert than it should. So we always have to be careful and we always have to make sure first thing first. Yeah, isn't that alignment. like the, technically it's product market fit? You know, so there's the marketplace, are they interested in the yes. product? And I yes. think it's important to, to build that vibe of whoever that salesperson is or whatever the culture of the company is. Does it align with the goals and visions and ethics of the customer? Because if it doesn't, you know, if someone's a Hillary supporter and they're, they're, uh, you're selling them a Trump product, it ain't going to work. <laughs> it ain't going to work. And, and really the beginning of the story for every marketer should be what's going on in my prospects mind when they land on this page. And that's where the conversation has to start. Only Apple can start its iPhone page talking about the iPhone because people already know they want an iPhone when they come onto that page. They already know what the iPhone is. But for every other company, including Medtronic that you mentioned earlier, those pages need to start with what does this target customer care about today? What is the real problem that we solve? The third thing has to be why are competitor products inferior? 
And then and only then can you then address why your solution is the best. And the last thing you got to do on that page is handle any late stage lingering doubt, hesitation questions that stall out the sales process. Those are the five points that generate momentum for a buyer as they're going through the process. Well, it's so refreshing hearing that from you because most marketers or marketing agencies and everything, they just, uh, they taught, taught the, the numbers, you know, this many followers and all that stuff. And that's not even relevant because it's not I mean, relevant. there's people that have millions and millions of followers, but they're broke. Right. The, I think the key is that the, the era of product centric marketing is gone and only because we've been able to look at the data and the data is where the decisions are. And if you put a product centric page, meaning it starts at point four, why is your product the best? If that's where your page starts, then your efficiency is going to be horrible. And if you start the relation, it's just like dude and bar. How many times does dude and bar walk up to girl and invite to the fish tank before that, that conversion works? Mm -hmm. And it's got to be a tremendous number. It's terribly inefficient. So if you just start by developing the relationship at the beginning, you're going to have a lot better results when you go in for the sale. Well, from, from years back, I remember people used to say the customer's always right. And it was a disingenuous statement. It was right. And what they're doing is they're just kind of schmoozing the customer. Nowadays, I believe the customer's in control because they can easily yes. jump from one URL to another. And you got to bring that. up a great point. In 2018, HubSpot commissioned a survey that discovered that 82% of buyers, this is 2018, 82% of buyers said that they don't want to talk with a salesperson until they're ready to make a buying decision, which really means that marketing and salespeople have to get really good at developing that relationship remotely so they tee up the need for someone to interact with a salesperson. And that's the kind of stuff that your company does with the, the video, a, the, a fun relationship sales type video and things rather than a pitch type video? You know, what we're really doing is we are uh, transferring, we're turning websites into our clients' best salesperson. Salespeople have always been the relationship development person. They've gotten in front of prospects. They've, they've started the conversation. They found out about what their sports teams are, where they like to eat, or, or what they do on the weekends. And they start the relationship. And there's no reason why in this world you need to scrap the way relationships are developed just because it's a remote context. I don't think it has to start off fun. I think it has to start off where your prospect is mentally when they arrive on that page and then get really good at having a variety of different pages based on where that prospect is mentally. So if you have different avatars or persona groups, have pages for each one of those avatars or persona groups. And then like Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time, your sales team and your marketing team can run the appropriate play by sending the right persona or avatar page to that right prospect. So you can move them through. All right. That uh, brings me back to, I remember my wife got involved with a program, but uh, when, once she got in the program it was totally foreign to her actual culture but the landing page that she saw on it and the yes. explainer video resonated with her really, really good. So that's what got her through the front door is that right. first impression kind of thing. And that's the kind of- Yeah, that's important. If you think about it, dating's the same way, man. It's like, you know, uh, often in the dating scenario, the first impression is what gets you to the next date and, uh, and so on. But you always wanna make sure all the way through, not only the, the first introduction, but through to the sale and even with existing customers, you have to make sure that you're providing massive clarity. This is why we use video and that we are teaching complex things in video instead of in text because people are four times more likely to watch video than to read text. We will transfer knowledge better when we use video instead of text because when people watch video, they retain 95% of the message inside of the video compared to only 10% of the message in the text because text is inefficient. And when you want people to buy after you've 
uh, transferred that knowledge. When people watch a product or a service video, they're 85% more likely to buy, which is the whole goal of speeding up the sales process. Well, where do you, like you said, text is inefficient. And my, what came to my mind is the whole SEO thing. Where, where do you stand yep. on the SEO? Because in my mind, it's like, how do I know what's in that guy's head, what he's going to type on the keyboard? How do I know that keyword? Even with the keyword research and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How do you, what's your take it, on the, the SEO? Easiest, I, so I was kind of, I cut my teeth in SEO. So um, one of the easiest ways to know what people are searching for is by going on to Google and typing in and watching the universal drop downs that oh, appear. Sure. Because that is an example of customer or search demand already. Because Google knows. So that's a great place to get started. Google wouldn't have curated those drop downs if there wasn't already an enormous number of people that are searching for those terms. So you have to make sure that you get terms that are related because you get terms that are that are not, a, if you're selling something that is a specific service, but the drop down that you select is not your service, you're going to have a disconnect. Right. You always want to make sure there's massive alignment. Got it. Well, that's good to know that kind of stuff. So yep. I'm kind of curious, what is your company's specific, like uh, ideal customer, the people you're looking for? What kind of uh, price range are they in? Are they entrepreneurial startup or is it mostly more corporation or billion dollar companies? or Well-funded startups to enterprise level businesses. And what we really do is we specialize in, uh, accelerating the sales process. Now that sounds kind of hokey, but in today's world, give you an example. Um, I'm doing a series of trainings right now for Tony Robbins' clients, teaching them how to use video in the sales process to move people through the knowledge transfer at accelerated rates. Most people, when they think of video marketing, they're like, okay, so that's like YouTube or, oh, all right. So you put a video on Facebook or maybe you put a video on your website. And people tend to think of video as a commercial, but that's a historical context that does not apply in today's world. That historical context is from yesterday's medium of television. And if yeah. you take that concept and you try to apply it into the new media, then you've got, um, you've got problems and you won't get the results that you want. So all of those concepts are somewhat scrapped in the new world. Instead, there are four phases of using video to generate influence with customers for a business. And you have to integrate each of the four phases in order to get maximum results. It sounds complex, but the reality is if you can lay out the strategy at the beginning and uh, organize the role that your marketing team plays, but also the role that your sales team plays, because sales today has to be able to grab their phone and do a follow-up video with a prospect after a meeting and answer questions right. because the entire sales process can be accelerated once you're aware of confusion. If you're aware of confusion as a salesperson or as a marketer and confusion is like a red flag for you. And anytime somebody asks you a question in sales, then you should be following up with them by providing clarity. And the way that we provide massive clarity in today's world is with video. So a salesperson should create their own videos after meetings. If a red flag for me is like, hey, well, Todd, let's have this meeting anyway, but Jerry, the boss, wasn't able to make it. it you know, that should be a red flag. After that call, that meeting, you should follow up and send a video to Jerry Hey, Jerry, wanted to give you a quick overview on everything that happened in the meeting because you got to move Jerry to the next meeting also, or there's going to be a disconnect with Jerry. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to submit a proposal, when you're going to ask somebody for money, you have to make sure that you inject massive clarity again, which means you put your proposal up on your screen and you coach that team through the proposal and explain Here's the problem that you brought to me, and this proposal is going to solve that. Let's walk through it together, and you answer it, because what will happen is, in most businesses, you've got an internal champion that you're trying to sell to. That internal champion, after they receive the proposals, talking to two or three other companies, and if you send them a PDF, 
That's a low success tactic for getting a sale. Instead, you want to send them a PDF, but also send them a show and tell video where you pop that PDF up on your screen and you talk into the camera, sure. make eye contact. You show them that you're somebody who's presentable. That's going to help them solve their problems because when your internal champion takes those PDFs down the hall into the team meeting and says, here are the three companies. When it's your time, you won't be in the room and neither will your competitors. But if you create a show and tell video and you put up the information, your internal champion will push play and you will have the opportunity to sell in front of that whole, that whole room right. by providing them massive clarity through the process. And that's how you optimize the path to yes. Well, this is very uh, refreshing to, to hear all this stuff because it's bringing that human element back into it instead of someone just saying, here's my link, here's a PDF, go read it on your own. It's uh, bringing that human factor back in. Every time we make H to H connections, human to human connections in business, we win because people people do business with people they have relationships with. Yep. That's why the alignment at the beginning of the conversation is important. That's why making sure that anytime you experience a red flag of confusion, you also follow up with the video because they're like, Magic Brad is the man. And every time he always recognizes what we're concerned with and knows how to follow up in a way that answers that. Because you got to make sure you're like, I look at myself, I'm a hybrid. I'm a, a marketing lead for the company, but I'm also the sales lead for the company. And my responsibilities as this company has gone crazy viral has become less leading marketing and leading sales and more doing thought leadership and speaking. But the reality is anytime you can put a human face on your product or service and you can show people that you are um, somebody they can trust and rely on. The person that gets hired today is not the one with the most experience or the longest resume. It is the person that's going to demonstrate the greatest willingness to shepherd you through to your solution. And that's who gets hired. So we use tools like video along the way to help uh, answer confusion, clear, clear any confusion up, and then move them to the next stage so they're ready to buy faster. Well, that's so cool that you're a big advocate of the whole video concept because I think that's, uh, again, that's, that's how the relationships get built. That's right. So I could go on all day with this. This is very intriguing to me. It's, it's fun connecting with people, especially when all of a sudden they resonate with my same interests and beliefs. <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, I don't like to do these too long because people do also have that commodity of time. There's only 24 hours in a day. So I'm going to sign this off. Could you share, as you getting like a, like a white paper or something you offer people or something on your website so they can yeah. get to know more about what it is you do. And yes, this is great. So uh, I also think white papers are low success tactics. So let me share with you how I do it. Okay. If you want to learn more about how to sell in this new world where it's impossible to get in front of your prospects, where you've got to still educate them and transfer the knowledge. I'm going to provide Brad to your audience's 20 minutes of free Todd training on how to re sell remotely. This will all be video. I'll show and tell as I go through it. But to your listeners, you guys can get access to it at wirebuzz.com forward slash remote dash sales. And I will teach you my best tactics for remote selling in today's world. Remote dash sales. Wirebuzz.com forward slash remote dash sales. Well, I will put that link in the uh, videos that I propagate out. And uh, when I share this out, if you see it online, if you could share it also, that'd be much appreciated. Of course. So this has been very cool. I'm going to have to make a trip down to Arizona. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I've, been, I've been to a lot of different countries and most of the states in the United States, but I haven't been to Arizona. You'll love it. It's beautiful out here. It is. I've been, I've been close. I've been to Utah. <laughs> Well, Todd, I appreciate you taking the time. If you want to do another one of these when you're doing a new product launch or something, just let me know. Just ring me up and we'll, uh, we'll make it happen. Thank so you, Magic it. Brad. It Thank was you. nice talking with you. You too. Be well. Peace. You too. Bye-bye.